I'm Mrs. Lori, and welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. Well, not really. I'm Mrs. Vicki from Vicki's Country Home, but I'm at Whippoorwill Holler, and I'm here visiting my dear friend, Mrs. Lori, and we are having a blast. Laughing, serious, everything. It's, but we, we just enjoy our time together so much. And it's worth coming across the country to see her, even with all the restrictions right now. It's, it's so worth it. But one of the things we've been doing and having so much fun is going to flea markets. And I couldn't wait to get here. And we've been doing that for two days and driving around and seeing spots that had memories for her and Mr. Danny. But we've also just been going to those flea markets and there's so much to see here. So I'm gonna show y'all my haul so far and kind of some of the stuff that we've been doing and getting. So let me get started. I found this wire basket and I just love it. And this is gonna hold kitchen towels and be out on my counter and I, I just think it's so cool. I love it. You can find old things and Nevada and really nice things, but everything is at antique and everything is at antique prices. So I really don't buy much there, but I come here and find so many cool things that I'm gonna have to ship at home or Mrs. Lori's gonna have to drive out and see me and bring it all. and. One way or another, we'll get it. So I found that basket and I found this kitchen towel. It's embroidered and it says, today's menu has two choices, take it or leave it. And that's the way I was raised and that's the way I raised my kids. So I, I loved that. And of course, Brian eats everything I make and says he loves it. So we're, we're good anyway. And if you watch me, you know I love my Pyrex bowls and I found this wheat pattern. And it's just so pretty, so I couldn't resist that one. But then I found these old bowls and they were all stacked together and I nowhere else did I see any that really caught my attention, but these did. And they're just really nice old bowls and I love that, so. That one, and I got this one. And then this one. And the colors all seem to go together too, but I just love them. And then we went to a yard sale for a family friend and they had these old belts. So this one is a cowbell and it's loud. And then these are goat bells. And I'm gonna have to put one on at least one of my goats just because, because I've never had bells on them, but that'll be fun or it'll drive me nuts and I'll take it off. I'm not sure yet. And these aren't that old, I don't think, but I loved them. It's just two little rooster salt and pepper shakers and they just were so cute. So, and I don't even collect salt and pepper or roosters, but I love these. So I got them. Now my mother-in-law used to collect cast iron trivets and I was left all of those and I have her full collection, but I found this one. And I, I love this one. It's different and it's got different kinds of legs. It's not just little spikes on the back pegs. It actually has shaped legs. So I bought that and that will add to my mother-in-law's collection. And growing up, I never had store-bought clothes except for once a year, my grandmother would buy us a Christmas dress. But other than that, everything I had was made by my mother or another grandmother. And so pinking shears were something I knew about very well. And I have a pair, but they're not very good. 
So I saw this set of three and it was for $17.99. And I've looked at new ones to get a better pair to replace. And you know what? They're a lot more than that and there's no guarantees. So I found these and they let me test them out in the store. Mrs. Lori wanted me to cut her shirt and I said, no, I'm not gonna cut your shirt. I'll just, I'll just buy them for that price. But they had a piece of scrap of fabric and I did test them. And these two work very well. This is a little dull and it might be able to be sharpened. I think it can be. They didn't, this one didn't cut as well, but these two cut really well. So I was happy with those. And I don't sew a lot, but I, I do make things. And then I do want to use the pinking shears to keep them from raveling. So it's really good to have a good pair. And then also when I, that first day out, when we were going to flea markets, I found these old church and church school cookbooks. And they really always have good recipes. So I bought two of them. And this one is called Our Daily Bread. And it's a Lutheran church in Falls Church, Virginia. It's got some good stuff in there. But then the next day we went to the Mennonite store here locally. And I think it was the Dalton store. And that was the store, the same store that Mrs. Lori and Mr. Danny used to run years ago. So it was fun going in there because they worked there, but also because they have so much neat stuff at Mennonite stores and we don't have anything like that in Northwest Nevada. So it's fun going through and finding things. But I found this cookbook in their store that's also called Our Daily Bread. And I didn't get it for that reason. I saw it later. So I have two called that, but this one is from the Bell Center Amish community. And it's got really good recipes. And what what amazes me as I'm flipping through it is it seems like most of them are sweets. <laughs> Not all, but there, there's a lot of sweets in these books. But I also bought these other two cookbooks there. And this one is Homemade Mixes, which y'all have seen. I make some of my own anyway. And this one is Favorite Recipes by the Amish Mennonites of Miller, Missouri. And again, it's really good. And again, there's a lot of sweets, but a lot of good recipes anyway. And while I was at the Amish store, they have a lot of things in bulk. And that was one of the things that I wanted to look at. So something I use constantly, but I also snack on it and have for years is candy ginger. I love it. It's super spicy, kind of has heat but it's sweet and I just love it. It's ginger's good for you. And for this price, I couldn't pass it up. It was $5.11 for one point one nine pounds. But that's a good amount of candy ginger for that price. And like the last time I was here, I buy these little scrubbies and I don't know what they're made of, but they're crocheted, I think, and they are just really useful. I bought some and I use them, so I wanted to get some more while I was here. And something I know I was seeing in Reno before I left, I went to the nurseries there and needed to buy some amendments, but I also wanted to stock up on some seeds, and they were, they had sold most of them. They they're just, everybody's buying them. So I found these at the Mennonite store and this is Bloomsdale spinach seed. And I've never had this kind, but I'm gonna give it a try. And I got two packages of Clemson spineless okra. I'm not giving up on growing okra. I'm gonna keep trying. Hopefully it's better next year. But I also got a pack 
quarter pound of green arrow shell pea seeds. And I wanna have a lot more of those next year. So this is a good amount for my little garden and I'll be trying that. Then other bulk stuff that I bought, and yeah, it's gonna fill up my suitcases some, but this is good prices and it's stuff that I use and I store. And if you're watching me and everybody else, I'm storing more than usual right now because things are getting a little more scarce in places and they're also costing more. And that's the big, the, things are really costing. And I'm a little bit concerned with what's going on around this election. So I don't wanna have to leave my house. I will be able to take care of myself and my family and be safe. We've already voted, so we don't have to leave for that. And we don't have to leave our valley to go to church. Everything's right there close, so I'm thankful. But one of the things that I bought bulk is pearled barley. Now, not everybody uses it, but for me, I have to have this on hand. When I make soups, which is a lot in the winter, and I just love making soups, I like to make them hearty. And I, I use a good amount of meat, but I use all kinds of vegetables, whatever I get my hands on. And I love putting leafy greens and all kinds of stuff in them. But one of the things that I use a little as a filler, but also it gives a chewy bite is barley. So I love putting barley in my soups. Beef soup is my favorite. My chicken soups, I always put it in those. It just really has a nice bite to it and it fills you up. So pearl barley, this was 59 cents a pound, $1.55 for this bag. Now I've normally bought, it's less than a pound and I'm paying probably a dollar and a quarter or more. So this is a good price. I bought, this is 1.115 pounds of fruit pectin. And I don't use a lot of it, but I've had neighbors that have tried to get it from me and I'm gonna see how this stores, but it was a good price. So, and it's available, which I'm understanding it isn't everywhere. And this is Vital Wheat Gluten. I bought some Vital Wheat Gluten a few months ago and I ordered it off of Amazon. I think it was a third party. It took me a month and a half and you couldn't buy it locally. I, I looked everywhere, you could not buy it. I needed it for a keto bread recipe and you, I was sitting around waiting. I had everything else for my bread and I couldn't make it because I couldn't get this. So I figured while it was in front of me, I would stock up and I'm gonna guarantee this is a lot less than I paid online. $5.39 for almost two pounds. So that was a good buy for me. And also I like to use real salt and this is a little pricey even here, but it was less than I've paid online. And real salt, this was $3.29 a pound. So I got about two and a half pounds of it. And that was a good bargain, I think. And another thing that I bought last time, I didn't buy very much of it, We've never seen, we never see these in Nevada. The Rada or Rada, I don't know how it's pronounced. I think it's Rada. Rada knives and utensils. And I've seen Mrs. Lori use her little wire whisk all the time, but I didn't know where she had gotten it. And she bought these from Rada. And I don't know if she got it, these at the Mennonite store or somewhere, but found it there and I was really happy on that. I got several different spatulas. This one's different because it's angled here, but it's also angled here. And I thought that would be good for like a casserole or getting brownies or something out of a pan. 
we ever get off of the keto diet. And I got, I think this is a cook's knife, which you can't see through the blade protector. And this I used when I worked in the bakery, in the deli, making sandwiches. And it's just a spreader for mayonnaise, mustard, whatever. And it's really convenient. It's more like a cake decorating spatula. It's wide, but it also has a serrated edge. So I grabbed that one. I grabbed a carving fork. This looks funny because it's got a little plastic loop on there so we don't stab ourselves. But I also found this and the, my grandma had one of these, but I didn't know if she, it was special or what it was, but it's called a granny fork. And it's shorter, it's long tines and very sharp barbed points. And I remember her using these. So I got one of those too. And that was exciting, I like that. And then one of the big things that I bought and I'm having to figure out how to get all this home, I found a Wagner chicken fryer with the lid. And it's all tied together, but it's in beautiful condition. It's seasoned. I'm going to have to just clean it, but that's about it. I don't know if you can see how in good a shape it's not pitted. It really is in good shape. So I'm really happy about that Wagner chicken fryer. I have Lots of Dutch ovens. But I remember my mother cooking so many things in her chicken fryer. She had a glass lid. And I don't think it was Wagner. I don't know what kind it was. But I loved cooking in it because it's deep. And so I got that. And good price. I think I paid $52 for this with the lid. I've seen just the base in Nevada at the antique stores and it was over a hundred dollars and they weren't in this good a shape. So I was thrilled to find this. I'll find a way to get it home. And I saved the best for last. This is a Griswold cast iron fruit and lard press. Now I know about fruit presses. I never heard of a lard press, but apparently it was used for that too. But I was so excited to find this. It is just such a neat thing. And it appears to be in good shape, other than it'll need to be cleaned and oiled. But the only thing, this, this bolt is tight and it does move, so I'll have to oil that and work at it. But I love this. I've never seen or heard of one like this before. And it's a Griswold, which I know is was a good quality. And I love their pans, their cast iron pans. To me, they're like Wagner's. They're both really good. So I was excited to find this. And someday, maybe I'll have enough grapes to make something with. I don't know. But... I just loved it. So this was a splurge and this is gonna be the tough one to get home, but I will find a way even if I have to ship it. So this was $120 and I didn't mind paying that for this. It's worth it to me. I paid $100 for a Griswold waffle iron in Nevada. So this is just such a special thing. So anyway, that is my Arkansas haul so far. <laughs> I've got a few days to go, so who knows what else I'll find or what else we'll do. And Miss Lori's kind of hiding out this morning. She's doing things around the homestead. She cooked me a wonderful breakfast. It's chilly out. It got down to low 40s, so Hope Cottage got its little heater turned on for the first time. and. It was wonderful. It, it is wonderful. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you subscribe. And for those of you subscribers that aren't seeing my videos, 
might want to go and unsubscribe and resubscribe. I think a lot of people are telling me they're not getting notifications and sometimes YouTube does this to you. So unsubscribe, hit subscribe again and hit that notification bell and tell it all notifications so that you get my notifications because you don't want to miss anything else that Mrs. Lori and I get up to this week and going forward. Thank you for watching and God bless you all. We're going to talk again soon. <laughs>